favorite inn. Don't make me fuss, so lotty dogs. Smack your wife, cause your teeth in a pin. Don't make me fuss, so lotty dogs. Size really matters when it comes to the screen. Don't make me fuss, so lotty dogs. Own in on the propaganda beam. Don't make me fuss, so lotty dogs. Guitar players, I know you all love to play fast. However, it's a great thing, but it's not the only thing. And it's not the most important thing. Every other technique, every other way of uh, getting a sound out that you want to get out is just as important as playing fast. But what I do see lately, I think, is a precedent on playing fast. Uh, but maybe not serving the music. So. I think the important thing that you have to understand that every technique you're doing, you're doing for a reason. You're, you're trying to serve the music. And that's uh, really what I want get to get into in this series that I'm going to do, uh, lesson-wise. Um, and I'm going to come from the perspective of composition, because I think everything should serve that. If you don't have a good composition, what's the point, you know? So I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on uh, compositions that I wrote, because I understand why I did those things, and I think it's the best place to come from. Uh, to teach such a thing. So anyway, uh, let's get on with it. So the song I'm going to do today is called Do Re Mi. Uh, it's in my rock opera called Simplex One. Uh, it's sort of an anti-consumerism song. Um, I'm going to go through all the parts and try to explain the meanings best I can. Uh, and also at the end of the video there will be a performance of the song by my band No Cheese Orchestra, recorded live at the Corner Pocket. 
It's a really cool version of it. Um, <clears throat> so let me just kind of try to break this down. First of all, do re mi, the title. Uh, do re mi, the major scale, uh, kind of what Western music is based on, or the start of it. It's kind of where we start to look, the scale we start to look through things with, you know. Okay, so we have that major scale. Now, when I say it's kind of the basis of Western music, I'm using that as a symbol for um, conformity, in a sense. Like, like if we just stuck to that, you know. So I'm using it that way, and I'm also explaining how I think conformity is dangerous. Now, I also spell do re mi different. So when people sing the song do re mi, uh, or, or going through the scale practicing, it's spelled differently. So I spelled it do d o u g h as in money. Uh, Ray, R-A-Y, as in light, but in this particular case, it's not shining. And me, as kind of what I, I always term as meism, this kind of uh, selfishness, this greed that the consumer culture is breeding. So, so while I have the scale, now, I wanted to use the major scale in the song, and I ended up doing that, you know. But I also wanted to make it ugly, because... That's how uh, that conformity feels to me. Conformity and the status quo feels very ugly to me. So I had to get that across. So what I did was I took the notes, and if you'll listen in, in, at, right at the beginning of the song, the notes are in there in the bass line, and they're also in this harmony that's played by the guitar, which used to be just the intervals. <laughs> So that major scale is inside of that, and you, you see it's very ugly. Now at the beginning of the song, I actually added uh, another note to it. Instead of intervals, now it's act they're actually full chords, so there's a three, basically a three-part harmony to that section. And the section's in 5-8. Now I like to count 5-8 uh, as, you know, 1-2-1-2-3, one, 1-2-1-2-3. Two, one, two, one, two, oh, you can reverse it, you can do it any way you want. But th in this particular song, it's 1-2-1-2-3, one, 1-2-1-2-3. Two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And all the um, accents are on the one, so one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. And that's how the chords are played in the, in the beginning. Okay, there it is. A little bit sloppy, but there's a lot of cool things going in there. I mean, this... You can almost look that as part of... Uh, uh, minor 7 flat 5. Basically, there's a C note, a G flat, and a B flat. And then I just go to a little F major chord. This inversion. And then down to a D. And then back to one that chord again, which, which is an A, an E flat, and a G. So. Then this right here. I don't get that much right because all those is weird. That kind of implies a G7. So you got this, which is F, B, and D. F, B, D. And that's basically a C minor, just a part of it. I'm playing the, the notes on the fifth, fourth, and third string right here. So, again, uh, That part, that part's fairly easy right there. It's just two major chords, a D to an E flat. And I'm playing a few more of the uh, um, um, notes within that uh, five note phrase, you know. Okay, then we go up to an E flat minor on the top three strings, which is a G flat, a B flat, and an E flat. And then a B flat minor. And basically there we have a F, a B flat, and a D flat. So you go. Okay. Then we have, this is pretty much implying a D major 7. The 1, the 5, and the 7. There's no third in there. And then we go to, really what's an F7, it's part of it. Did you hear that? 
three strings again, and this is just a um, an E flat, an A, and a C. So we'll have. Then we go to an E flat major. Again, E flat, a G, and a B flat. And then I turn that into a C minor by just laying my pinky down, which would be this. If you see this right here, these top three strings, that's all. So I'm just going, just laying it down. And then I go down to a D major, same fingering, just slide it down from the E flat to the D on a half, a half step down. And then we go to a D augmented, because I'm raising the fifth. So that's kind of a tricky part, you know. Then it goes into a fairly kind of an easier part. It's it's fairly simple. I, I, I it's like the groove of the song. It ends up be, it ends up being a sort of chorus at the end of the song. So I have a B flat minor seven, but the ba the bass was playing. Um, a D flat, so it's really kind of like a, implying a implying a D flat major, and I'm be playing the sixth in the bottom, you know, and then an E flat major, and then a B flat, and an A flat with it. So, so the group there is. Okay, and that's pretty much it's like a four, five, two. Really, that's how I look at that because th this also happens later in the solo section. So I view that as the four and the five down to the two chord, but I'm substituting the two because if you notice, I'm, I'm I'm not playing a minor. Because the two chord is usually a minor chord, right? But we can substitute it with a dominant. But I'm just playing the triad from the dominant chord. I'm not adding the flat seven, so I'm just playing that. So when you so when I solo over this, you know, well, well I'll get to that actually when we get to the middle of the song, I'll explain that. But it's a good thing to remember that is a, a basically a four five to a two substitute. And then we have the crazy verse. Okay, now here's where the lyrics start coming in. And the lyrics I have here, remember, you gotta remember, there's this uh, evil Nazi mad scientist, and he's kind of like, he's kind of like the evil corporation and the, you know, the uh, the marketers and, cons and consultants and trying to get you know brand children at two years old, blah, you know. Anyway, so he um, he's berating this couch potato type person who's kind of going with the flow, you know. He's not ruffling any feathers. He's not rocking the boat. He's um, Living the life the way he's told to live it, and uh, he's and and the, it's funny because he's being berated, but he's just going along with it, not really maybe noticing. So this is this is where the lyrics are kind of coming from. So this Nazi mad scientist is basically saying these things to him, and the first line is "Live your life through your favorite inch," and when I mean inch, I'm talking about your television screen, you know, whatever size you might have. Um, and it's smack your wife because your team's independent. So this guy's watching his uh, his team lose, and his wife's taking the brunt of it. Uh, size really matters when it comes to the screen, which is a reference to people always trying to outdo each other with items, you know, because we feel like items. I think too often represent who we are, and I think that's a huge mistake. Uh, and then the final line: hone in on the propaganda beam, which I really think. The television is. I think the television has some good stuff on it, and it can also be a very dangerous tool. And it's used that way to, uh, you know, brand people to turn out to be just consumers and not really think about why they're buying something or is it really going to aid their life. So that's that whole section, and that and every line is represented by the music. So when I say live your life through your favorite inch, I actually have the drummer play this kind of collapsing beat. I, I believe it was a triplet kind of feel against what the song is doing because that's what it feels like to me it's like this thing that mm, bad direction you know so the, the the drum represents it and I'm basically just saying it over the drum beat and the bass player is following it and every line is followed with the retort 
Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Ti, Do, and they're sung with these harmonies by the singers. We're using these notes. And those are actually just parts of the first chords that I showed you, minus that third extra note. Like... And you can kind of hear the atonality in there, you know, the disturbance, okay, which I wanted to get. And then when I hit the line, smack your wife because your team's in a pinch, this is very disturbing, so I used, you know, the sharp four interval, the devil's interval, you know. I kind of stacked them, and the drums hit with it, so it's like... And that starts off in A, so... Just stacking sharp fours. Again, followed by... And then when I'm talking about size really matters when it comes from the screen, from the screen, when I, because I'm trying to make this sound grandiose, uh, the, the drummer goes into that old classical kind of thing, fourths, bum, 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 and it's huge, it's grandiose, it's gigantic, you know? So size really matters when it comes to the screen. And then hone in on the propaganda beam is a snare roll which centers you, you know, that's, that was the whole idea right there. So when you hear the song after, you're going to hear, listen to the verses carefully, and you can hear all those parts coming together. And I think that's an important thing in composition, that you just don't, you know, lay down a couple of chords, you know, and then sing over it. You know, try to get the music to represent a vision of yours. You know, it doesn't have to be my vision, it has to be your vision. The way you see it, the way you hear it. But take it somewhere, try to be very creative inside of what you're doing. And that's what I tried to do in the verse there. And, I, and if, when you hear it, I think you'll find it quite interesting. So then it goes to like a, a sort of pre-chorus right after that. And there's just this little interval. Uh, it's, um, it's kind of like a third with the, uh, with the octave up. Or you can look at it as a flat six. But it's starting on a B flat. To a, and a G flat. Those are the two notes. Then it goes to an F major chord. Then a little power chord on the fourth string off the G, 1-5 off the G, then an E flat major followed by the, the top of the scale. Okay, so you'll hear that in that when it rises up in this sort of B section pre-chorus thing. Then we have to go to another verse. And I used another word. I, I'm going to use a poop here. Uh, think you're great because the poop you own. You know, and again, it's that vision of, you know, because we have stuff, we're better. And it's not true. Okay? <laughs> All right. So, uh, think you're great because the poop you own. And I have this kind of jazzy kind of like arrogant kind of thing. A ding, a ding, a ding, a ding, underneath. Now, remember, the, uh, I'm actually doing this Nazi character. And you hear this little jazz thing going on, it's like it's like an arrogance in there, you know what I mean? Uh, and then again, followed by uh, that thing again. Uh, and then pay for it till you're under the stone. And what we do there is we do Amazing Grace, just a schnipsel of it. We throw that in before we go back to the next line. And it represents... Because, you know, a lot of times at a funeral or something, they'll play Amazingly Great, Amazing Grace. And um, what's happening, if you get so in debt, it's, it's, just, it's basically a commentary on debt. And it's saying that you'll be paying for it till you're under the stone. Okay? But it was, I thought using Amazing Grace was a cool way to represent that. And then I went grandiose again with the, the toms and the bass playing fourths uh, for this part. Because, again, it's big. You know, the guy with the, it's a question. The guy with the biggest pile wins. That's the question I'm asking, okay? And then basically kind of a visceral answer to that, which a steamy pile is all you is, and that's centered again with a snare roll. And then we go back to the B section. And then basically, there's a really cool chorus that, it's a sort of a chorus that's like the intro of the song. And it's just based off this. <laughs> Just like in the verses, you're just, it's a line, you know. You do the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And that repeats, okay? So after that, 
semi-chorus. It finishes off and then it goes back into the intro again with that 5-8 uh, five eight feel in the five eight chords, these chords. And then it's like we're going back to that groove again, but now the guitar solo is gonna be over it. And that's where I come again to mention that was a basically a four, a five and a substituted two with a dominant chord. And really, I don't use a lot of different scales. I'll, I'll use usually a blue scale. You know, really, to be, you know, it works. Maybe throw a major seven in between there. Okay, so I might uh, do a blue scale and add the major, the major seven in between the flat seven and the one. So just to get some extra notes in there and maybe throw a diminished. I guess you can do that once in a while, some stuff like that. But I pretty much stick to that in that solo. And whatever happens, happens. You know, whatever comes out, comes out. <laughs> so after the guitar solo, we come to this uh, kind of the original groove, like the, this part. <laughs> It gets really like grooving and picks up and a real nasty groove there and um, real, a lot of attitude and there's a really bizarro melody over it <laughs> okay because the bass player I believe is playing like a he's playing like a, a B flat major scale and then some I believe sharp fours like a so you, Stuff like that off the B flat, and going back and forth between that and the major scale. All right, so there's a very odd melody that goes over that, and actually on the live version that you're going to see again, that was at the beginning of the video and is going to be at the end, um, has this played. The guitar is playing the line, and also uh, the vocalist uh, plays a kazoo with it, and it sounds really cool. It's pretty crazy sounding, but it's a. Uh, <laughs> slower but that's how it goes so it's a really kind of cool contrast it adds more of the tension this is like a, it's really like a bridge part that brings you out into the end groove chorus where you know where, where it really takes it out strong and the end groove chorus is really just back to the section with the four four five two substitute dominant you know so. And they're just singing, throwing away your life because you, when you're doing the do re mi, throwing away your life when you're doing the do re mi. So that's how I just wanted to show how to uh, t take an idea and develop it. And I could really go a lot further with it, but I, you know, because I'm doing a lot of talking here as opposed to playing. But I wanted to show you how you know how to think about it, you know. I want you to do it my way. I want you to find your way to do it. To think about what you're writing, why you're doing it, and try to represent it in some way. And think about what the way things sound to you. I mean, that's how it's important. I mean, you know, it's possible that when I play that chord that, you know, I hear love and you hear violence you know, or something, you know. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it really matters how you feel about it. And, uh... Just being creative in the music and not just slapping things together. You know, I, th I think as artists we always want to develop and really try to say something with what we're doing. Anyway, so I hope you got something out of this. You know, if you have any questions about, you know, some of the chords, like in, in more detail, you know, feel free to email me, which will be at the end of the video. And uh, check out the live recording of the song. It's, uh, it's pretty nasty. All right, until next time. Signing off.
Yeah. 